Green energy stocks have spent most of 2021 in the red. That's despite President Biden's clean energy push and all of this interest in electric vehicles. And Vesco's clean energy and solar ETFs, these are tickers PBW and TAN, they're both down about 20 percent this year. Their ETF chief for the Americas recently told CNBC investors shouldn't expect gains overnight, saying, quote, when you think about the transformation to clean energy, we think about it over decades, not days. But, Christina, what do you think is really going on here? Well, this isn't, like you said, it's not an overnight sensation. This is something that's going to take a while to change. It's not just the United States. You have uh, Boris Johnson in the United, uh, United Kingdom that is mentioning this 10-point cl- plan. You have the EU with their Green Deal. You have even China wanting to clean up production. So all of this is not going to happen overnight. But the fact that everybody is making a statement, you have a lot of investors that put their capital into these ETFs, a lot of these individual companies, many of which they're not even turning a profit. So that's when you have to look at is their current market cap, the price that you're seeing on all of the exchanges, are they very disconnected from the underlying values of a lot of these companies? Mm -hmm. And that's where we can raise the question of whether these are in a bubble. Uh, You just mentioned a bunch that we're showing on the screen here. I also have a graph that I was looking at that maybe we can bring up just in terms of how often now funds and institutional investors are talking about ESG and just this bar chart just visually shows wow. how much it's just gone up just within the last year uh, from 2020 to 2021. So the, the conclusion, I guess you can say, is, yeah, going green is here to stay. But is it frothy? Do we need to see it cool down a little bit? Because a lot of these companies aren't even making money yet. Right. And it's unpredictable to try to tie that back to stock performance. You think this would be among the best performers. Actually, on that note, let's talk about what's going on with hydrogen. One Wall Street firm, is, uh, BTIG, is initiating two players Plug power, pu- plug power and Nikola. Of course, we talk a ton about both of these names, but this all comes under this hydrogen umbrella. BTIG is bullish on it because of momentum from the Paris Climate Agreement, because of the rise of ESG investing, and because of green investments from banks. Neither stock is moving too much today, Tim, but they are up big this week. So to the point Christina was just making, how do you sensibly play this humongous ESG theme when it's unreliable on a stock-by-stock basis? Yeah, and, and investors in plug have, have seen a stock, uh, again, be on a wild roller coaster ride, essentially a 50 percent pullback. Um, and, and the story in, in hydrogen is, you know, you're slowly starting to see uh, both the infrastructure and the adoption and, and the, you know, the orientation uh, for consumers to actually begin to, you know, get to this hey, transition. Really- and, and this is so, in other words, this is even earlier than EV. Yeah, I, I mean... Hydrogen and EV are the best thing that ever happened to dirty energy. I mean, I, you know, I, I again, <laughs> people are going to hate me for this, um, but that's that. You know, that's why energy and the the you know the oil services and some of the other spaces have been outperforming is because Biden's. EV policy well, has been and, great for dirty energy. And to that point, Tim, just to, to kind of like highlight this a little bit, I mean, there's people who are saying this entire movement, this entire divest movement is a, bullish for the oil price, a.k.a. going to push it up. It's what we're all using in the meantime. I mean, that's a problem. A lot of the stuff yep. that we drive and consume and pay our energy bills with is that old, dirtier energy that's going to be more expensive possibly than ever as a result of all this. Yeah, and, and, and I think as, especially as we are kicking off this weekend where we're all going to start maybe driving somewhere and, and, and peak driving season's just getting going. Um, and people are going to look at energy credits differently. And remember, you know, Tesla, I don't want to use this as a Tesla you know, segue um, other than to say, you know, Ford and GM and the big OEMs have essentially been selling energy credits. Uh, I mean, have been buying energy credits, excuse me, and this mm-hmm. has been a big windfall for Tesla. So these are some of the other dynamics to watch. I think, you know, what worked yesterday for some of these companies is different. And as Ford, we've heard all week, is moving into an EV strategy. Yeah. I think they're, they're, they're going to benefit from those credits. You want to go bearish on Bitcoin, too, just to kind of, you know, wrap, wrap up the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, no, we're going into a long weekend. I mean, isn't this the time when, when actually the, the price action around Bitcoin Bitcoin's been uh, collapsing. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, again, uh, the VIX is sub 15 or getting around 16 ish. Um, so way, way down over the last mm-hmm. two weeks off of the highs. And, and yet crypto is still struggling. Interesting. Yeah, making the point. All right. Let's talk finally before we go. As we look at these reopening dynamics across the economy, one of the big ba- some of the big banks now are trying to lure people back with meals, our own Hugh Sun is reporting that Goldman, Credit Suisse, and Bank of America are among a long list of companies that are now 
paying for or providing free food as a way to get people back into the office. So for some, this started early on in the pandemic. I mean, we at CNBC had a little bit of this as kind of a, hey, you know, we appreciate you being in the office and so forth. Some of it is because restaurants are closed or when on lockdown, there wasn't another choice. Now it's a motivation tool to bring back workers. A recent poll found that 64 percent of remote workers are not comfortable returning to the office for at least another month, Julia, or more. Well, look, Kelly, I have to say what's old is new again. This has been a technique of the Silicon Valley tech giants for years. I remember a decade ago being in the big Silicon Valley tech giants offices like Twitter, Facebook, Google, they all had the most remarkable spreads of food. This is a strategy not only to lure over talent, but also to keep people in their offices and working. You can save a lot of time if you don't have to leave the office and go get food. Also, of course, in Silicon Valley, there are a lot of office parks, so there aren't that many options around. But I think this is a really classic strategy, not only to make your workers feel appreciated and taken care of, but also prevent them from maybe getting a little too distracted during their lunch break. Yeah, God forbid, you know. Christina, I'll give you the last word on this. I think it's unfortunate that you have so many of the smaller players, the mom and pop shops, that can't get these workers back. Yeah, we're talking about these big banks. We're talking about big tech that can afford to offer subsidized meals, free meals. But what about all of the smaller players out there that are still struggling, can't find workers? And I think that's something that we really need to focus on. Yeah, it's going to widen the gap between those who can and those who can't. It's a great point. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.